What's up guys, this is Z House from Gun Gamers, and today I'm going to be talking about a subject for real this time that I jokingly talked about uh, just a few short weeks ago, and that is night vision. Yeah, as you may have noticed, uh, more and more members of the Gun Gamers crew recently have been getting into night vision and have been making that purchase. And I want to talk today about whether or not you need night vision and whether or not it's worth it. I know that this is a question that's uh, gonna bring out some strong answers on one side or the other, but I'm gonna try to talk about, you know, maybe some of the factors that you need to evaluate before you decide to drop the money on a night vision setup and maybe how much you should be dropping if you're trying to shop for whatever your particular needs are. So this video comes on the heels of me going to Milsim West, the Balkar Surge, and that was actually the first Milsim game I've ever gone to where I've had any kind of night vision capability. Uh, now, I've been playing Airsoft for a long, long, long time. Uh, yesterday actually marked the eight year anniversary of my first game at a real field. And before that, I'd played for a couple of years, you know, doing backyard stupidity. So there we go. You know, I've been playing this game for a long time. I'm on like a decade of Airsoft and I just bought night vision. So bear that in mind. I've been playing this game for 10 years and I've been going to national ops. I think my first national op I went to was back in like 2012. And I've been playing for that long and I just bought night vision. So I've got a good bit of experience on, you know, the end of not having it. And I have to say, <laughs> now that I've been to a game where I did have it, I do not regret spending the money. It's one of those things where it's a lot of money to spend and it's a big investment. But now that I did it, and now that I have it, holy shit, it really does change the game. Now granted, this is my first game having had it. And this is the first time I've used it. So I'm not gonna go into any super detailed talk about how best to make use of it. You know, all the little tips and tricks, because. Quite frankly, I don't have the level of experience yet to be able to give you that input. But what did it change? What did having night vision change at this game that I felt amplified my experience over not having night vision? Well, being a Milsim West game for 40 hours of the game, probably 16 of those, 16 or more, were pretty dark. And so that's almost half the game where without night vision, you really can't see that much. So that kind of sucks until then you put on the night vision. And we were actually inserting in the game during the dark. We were rucking in in the nighttime hours. It was dark already when game on was called. And it was very nice to immediately be able to flip down this monocular, turn it on, and be able to see. So when we were rucking in, I had no trouble navigating, I had no trouble finding my footing, I had no trouble knowing where my teammates were, keeping track of everybody, we didn't get separated or lost because pretty much my entire fire team has some kind of night vision capability. And it was really easy for everyone to keep track of each other. So that was very nice. Then we, uh, our fire team actually ended up splitting away with a couple of squads from our platoon and we went to go clear out the uh, the first camping site, I guess you would call it. Uh, what we're gonna establish is our first PB. And we were part of that, we were able to be part of that. We were able to go up and, hey, let's go support this element because we can actually go do the stuff off the main road at night because we can see. Uh, there's more to that story that I'll get into as I keep talking, but I'm gonna bookmark that there and just say that night vision really does allow you to do things with airsoft that previously were far more difficult or almost impossible. We were hiking on some really treacherous terrain in the pitch black at night, and we were able to do that reasonably effectively, reasonably quietly, and get the drop on the Russian element that was up there because we had night vision. And if we were trying to do that with flashlights, we would have been making more noise because you know, you're 
trying to shine your flight or your light around we would have been you know making a whole bunch of light pollution so that would have been much more likely we would have been spotted a lot of stuff went into being able to make that trek up successfully and what ultimately allowed us to do that and allowed us to have the element of surprise and maintain our discipline to get up there without being spotted or heard or whatever was night vision and i want to make a note here that most of the people on that hike had at least gen 2 night vision i have gen 3 uh pretty much everyone else had gen 3 uh one of my friends had gen 2 and he had a little more trouble but he was still able to make it work gen 1 though and I made a joke in the Tactical Wizard video, you know, kind of kind of poking fun at, you know, all the elitism about, oh, never buy Gen 1, that's stupid. I hate to say it, but there really is some truth to that. We had, a, we had one of our guys on our fire team who was using one of those Armasite Spark Core units, which are the Gen 1 Plus, and they have Gen 3 resolution. So it sounds like a pretty good deal for a four or $500 unit. The issue was he couldn't see he actually ended up flipping up his unit because he thought it was easier to see with his bare eyes. Without the use of an illuminator, Gen 1 did not work at night in the woods. It just didn't. He was unable to see, he ended up tripping and falling and making all kinds of noise, and he actually ended up injuring himself uh, prematurely in the game. He injured himself, you know, messed up his ankle on night one because he couldn't see. And, you know, this was a great dude who was a solid guy, and I was really sad to lose him. But I think that's a, an example of, you know, when you're trying to navigate without the use of an IR illuminator or a flashlight because you're trying to maintain light discipline and you don't have some other kind of way to see, you elevate your risk of things like injury. And this guy did get injured, unfortunately. So it, it almost is kind of a safety thing where if you're going to be doing this really crazy stuff at night, you either need to be in a situation where you can use a flashlight or you need to have some kind of night vision that actually works. And unfortunately, this guy just didn't. So that, uh, you know, best wishes to him. You know, I hope he makes a full recovery. Uh, he seems to be doing pretty well. I haven't talked to him. Uh, I hope he doesn't mind that I use this story. But yeah, that's, in my opinion, a good example of why maybe if you're going to bother getting night vision, maybe save up for a higher end unit. Uh, so another thing that night vision really helped with was not just navigation, but even like static defense and keeping watch, night vision really, really helped. Uh, our fire team ended up, you know, taking watch a lot uh, when we were at our PBs. And because I had night vision and because a couple of my other guys had night vision, it was actually a lot easier and frankly more enjoyable to stand out in the dark and in the rain on night two and you know, look for any kind of activity because now you're not just trying to pick things out of the shadows. Now you flip that monocular down or binocular, whatever the heck you're using, and you can actually see and look around. And it's, it, number one, the novelty of, hey, I'm, I'm looking through night vision. That helps keep you awake. Uh, you know, because when you're in a Milson West game and you're running on like no sleep, you're, uh, you know, you're abusing whatever substances you need, like five hour energies or caffeine pills to stay awake. The novelty of I've got night vision really does keep you awake. Uh, maybe that wears off after a couple of games. I wouldn't know. Uh, but the other thing is because it's less frustrating and you get less paranoid. So it's not as, uh, it's not as crazy tense keeping watch because you feel more like, oh, you know, I can see. I mean, it's still tense. I mean, that's just part of the experience of a Milsim game like this is that you never know when something's going to go down. But it was a lot easier to keep watch and we were a lot more effective because we weren't constantly, you know, thinking we saw something when we didn't. Or if we did see something, we could accurately call it out. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. And the Russians at this game... Uh, they did not seem to match our night vision capability. And a couple of members of our platoon were able to walk right into their PB and shoot some of them in their sleeping bags because they were not as effectively keeping watch. So that's, uh, that's a good example there of, you know, one camp that does have night vision on watch and another camp that doesn't. Different things happened. Now, to be fair to the Russians, they actually didn't attack us at night, but that's also because they didn't have night vision. 
Uh, guys on our platoon who did have night vision were able to go out and do some hunting and do some harassing at night. And that's something I've noticed with uh, Russia versus NATO with these games is a lot of the Russian and militia forces often don't have night vision. So they don't end up going out and doing any crazy stuff like hunting or, you know, attacking the PBs. Whereas NATO will more often go out and do that because NATO often has more night vision. And that ties into what I was talking about earlier of how much easier it is to move at night and navigate at night, especially on hostile terrain, which, you know, Balkar Ridge, the Cove campground was. So bear that in mind. Uh, you're just enabled to play that much harder for that much longer because you can see. I think that's ultimately my point with this video is that while night vision is not necessary, I mean, I've gone to plenty of Milsim games before without night vision and had plenty of fun, but I find that it's a lot easier to maximize the amount of fun you're having for a longer period of time when you can actually effectively see and when you're not trying to use flashlights and having everyone yell at you to maintain light discipline. When you have, you know, a Gen 3 monocular and you don't even really need to use an illuminator unless you're indoors, that makes things a little easier to play. Uh, so you're, you end up, yeah, you pay like a thousand plus dollars for a night vision unit. I got a pretty crazy deal on this one. Uh, but when you get it, you end up maximizing the enjoyment level of your experience that you pay, you know, $150, $200 for the ticket, and then you end up not enjoying like half the game as much as you could because you can't see, versus now you enjoy it a lot more and you are able to see a lot better and you are able to play a lot more effectively. So it, it kind of sucks for people who don't have night vision that that's the reality. But as night vision continues to proliferate throughout the airsoft world, it, it really does kind of become one of those things where if you can't beat them, join them. And now that I've joined them, I'm like, oh, damn, you know, it's, that really was worth it. As I mentioned, I don't think I would recommend getting a Gen 1 unit just because of the issues I saw with one of my friends having it. And I would really tell you to at least, at least save up for Gen 2. Uh, there's a few good groups on Facebook. There's the Airsoft Night Vision Users group. Uh, there's a couple of different places where you can buy, sell, and trade night vision units. And you can often find some pretty good deals on there. Um, one of my friends got his night vision from eBay, got a pretty good deal on there. Uh, you really do have to shop around to effectively find a deal that's within your price range. but. I do recommend saving up and really trying to trying to have a good budget of at least like $1,000 to $2,000. And that's a lot of money. I'm not sitting here saying that that's not a lot of money. And if you can't afford it and you're like, you know what, I'll deal without night vision, I don't blame you. I did that for a lot of years and you really can play really effectively and have a ton of fun without it. But if you're wondering if that $1,000 to $2,000 is gonna amplify your experience that much more, I really do think it does. Because if you think about it, yes, that's $1,000 to $2,000 on this night vision unit, well, plus the setup and all that other stuff. But then, once you've paid that, that's it. You have it now. So you really never have to buy it again unless you wanna buy like other pieces or you know other stuff, but that's all pretty much optional. Once you've paid it, you've got it. Uh, and you know, make sure you buy lens protectors and whatnot. Um, but once you've got it, then think about the fact that some of these games, if you put together a hotel, food, travel, event ticket, ammo, pyro, all the cost that goes into going to something like a Milsim West, American Milsim, Third Coast, whatever event promoter you're going to, if you put together the whole cost of really going to one of those games, it's a lot more than the $150 to $200 for the event ticket. It can be anywhere from $500 to $1,000, depending on how much money you spend on travel and food and pyro and ammo. And now if you think about it in those terms, you're basically spending as much as you would spend for two or three events to amplify the experience at pretty much every event you attend from now on. So once you put it in that perspective, the value kind of goes up. Now, that might just sound like I'm justifying the fact I wasted a bunch of money on silly BB Wars pretend time, and that probably is what it is, but I'm at least objective enough to acknowledge that 
but also objective enough to say, but yeah, it was really fun though. And that's what this is about, right? <laughs> so yeah, uh, this should be the tiara to your Pretty Princess BB Wars costume. I definitely think it really is worth it. Um, I, I'm really glad that I got it. I'm sad that I waited this long now that I have it. But I really think if I hadn't waited this long, maybe I wouldn't appreciate it as much because now that I see the difference, it really is night and day. Okay, that was a dad joke. I'm really sorry. I'm not that sorry. All right, I've been rambling long enough. I think you guys get the gist of this video. I hope that maybe you found it helpful and informative. I hope maybe I made some points that resonate with you guys. Um, if not, be sure to let me know in the comments. Call me an idiot. Call me, you know, a Seth Rogen lookalike. Whatever else mean comments you want to make. Uh, call me Jorgen von Strangle again. That really made my day uh, to whoever that was. If, I hope you're watching. But anyways, this has been E-House from Gun Gamers, and I'm signing off. Peace. Thank you for watching this video from Gun Gamers. We hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. If you want to see more content from us, hit that subscribe button, and if you want to help support the channel, be sure to click the link below to buy a patch. Praise Judy.